B of the Eliminator, Michael Haugen Jr., representing 900 Global, NBA Player of the Year, Mika Koivu Niemi, Sean Rash, Jason Belmonte. Winner of this pod will take on Steve Jarris with another five points on the line. Up first, representing 900 Global, who just won the Group A, Michael Haugen Jr. And cannot get the seven. What a coup it would be if Haugen Jr. was able to win this wow. group. <laughs> they are at Team 900 Global already with five points from Jarris. Could get another five with this and would then be guaranteed another five with two teammates battling for the Eliminator title. Here's Mika Koivu Niemi representing Ebonite. Push! Ebonite in the lead, and Mika will certainly move on. Well, the only chance Michael Haugen has of pulling off the feat that you just described is if somebody gets less than nine. Two more strikes, one by Sean Rash and one by Jason Belmonte, and Haugen will be one and done. A little toe-to-head profile of Sean Rash. Come on, Sean. And he will move on. That big high back swing and that cuffed wrist creates a lot of power, and the six goes to the sidewall and snaps the ten off. Sean Rash is safe. Yeah. Belmo safe as well. Michael Haugen Jr. representing 900 Global done. One more point for 900 Global. That gives him 21. They are still in the basement. Well, better than always count. Well, that's what power and speed does for you. Shreds the rack on off hits. Jason Belmonte, he likes it. Michael Haugen Jr., not so much. Koivu Niemi. Coming off a monster season. Push! Oof. Might be low ball there. <laughs> <laughs> Might be low ball there, he said. More <laughs> through the middle. Great comment, Mika. Watch this. this yeah, he this can pretty much no change here. his shoes now. Here comes a straight <laughs> ball down the middle. Sean Rash, all he has to do is knock foul. That foul? Let's see, did he go over the foul line? Uh, nope, he's good. And there's nine. So Belmo needs five or better. <laughs> and he gets nine. So Corbu Niemi and Team Ebonite get two points. They are out. Oh, Mika, too funny. Down to our final two in Group B, the winner between Rash and Belmo to take on Steve Jarris. Rash backs off. He's been known to do this. Yep. Not sure why. Usually it's a smart move, though. Step up to that. Rash, uh, Little challenge made to Belmo. Step up to that as he walks away after that strike. Another look at our, the guys in the truck are telling me to look left and Belmonte with a, a water bottle. Couldn't hear anything with our microphones. He has been accused in the past of making noise with the water bottle. It showed up in April in Indy as Belmo gets a strike to match Rash. Love it. Love that. So Sean back up now. And another back off. Really? Lots of class right there. Well, the water bottle just got Sean Rash that time. For sure. Without question. Hard to tell if that was... Belmo being playful or not. Go through it. Take that, you bottom. Come on. Well, everybody, come on. Let's go. Let's have some fun. 
That is a call out. That is a borderline Everyone you do it to. enraged Sean Rash. And he clearly feels that that was an intentional crackle of the water bottle. Yeah, but what's interesting about it is Jason Belmonte is laughing about it like there was no malintent. I, I just, I don't get it. A, a strike by Belmore to match. We roll on. And, I mean, it's hard to, we, we can't put words in these guys' mouths or their heads of what's going on right now, but clearly Sean Rash feels at least once, and I think twice, that he heard a water bottle noise from Jason Belmont. He Rash with another strike, and that second time, it, it does feel like maybe Jason was being a little bit playful with that. Regardless, Belmo must match Rash's strike. Leaves the 10. Rash moves on. Well, make no mistake about it. Rash is not playing. No. no. And those two sit side by side, but there is a gulf of tension between the two of them. And now uh, that look by Rash says it all. You're a dead set clown, man. Ah, uh, you gotta have a couple shots. Belmo just called him a clown. Let's listen to what triggered that conversation. You hear that little pop? Sean heard it. But when you watch some of the Storm players like Norm, Wes Malott, they're both smiling. To me, it, it leads me to believe there was no malintent, but unfortunately, Rash did not see it that way. Sean, why were you so fired up during this match? You know, there's been a lot of things throughout the last year or so that Belmo's done on TV to a lot of competitors out here, and we all have a lot of respect for everybody out here, but there's instances that you just can't control, and you got to have some respect when the other player is on the lane. And uh, I love Belmo to death, but he's done it a lot to fellow competitors, uh, fellow staff members, and, you know, it just needed to get under my skin a little bit, and that's what got me to where I was. Specifically what? Um, instances this past year in Indianapolis, he was messing with a water ball with Brad Angelo from our Brunswick staff and team, and, you know, he did the same thing to me. Just, it's something small where you just grab it enough to make it a nice little click, and, uh, you know, it distracts every single one of us. And it's been more than one person. and. Um, you know, it got me fired up, and that's what I did. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we flash back to that incident that Sean is talking about. Heard a pop right as Angelo is approaching. Come on, Jake. Come on. You didn't do anything about crippling the stupid bottle? It's the third time you've done it. Jeez. No better than that. Oh, welcome to Bottlegate, ladies and gentlemen. Bottom line, Jason Belmonte's integrity is being questioned. It's a simple fix, Jason. Lose the water bottle. The last thing you want to do is disrupt your opponent when he steps up on the approach with the bowling ball. Give him a shot to make that perfect shot. Do not distract your opponent at all costs. Ash moves on, but he's still frustrated with Jason Belmonte. Kimberly with Belmo. Jason, Sean said the water bottle incident fired him out just now. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Again, unfortunate. Um, do I think he handled himself well for him and his, and his uh, company? Not at all. I thought it was very uncalled for. We've uh, known each other for more than a few years. Uh, he should know better than that. I'm a little disappointed in him, and obviously I'm also upset that uh, the bottle cracked again. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just disappointed at, all around. It's, it's pretty... Uh, Clown-like, if you would describe it better. So, thanks. Felt like Jason put the onus on Rash and not at all on himself with that. Interesting. We move on to the Eliminator Final. Steve Jarris taking on Sean Rash. Two-ball match, highest total pinfall wins. Five points on the line. We'll let go to 900 Global or to Brunswick. Jarris. Ooh. Shot, shot. Good shot there by Steve Jarrett. Only to leave a ring 10. I like that one a lot. <laughs> Remember, two ball totals pinfall. Oh, I like that one. 
Winning Wednesdays on the PBA Facebook page is your chance to win prize packs from the PBA product registered companies. Here is Rash with his first of two shots. So that strike will give Rash a temporary one pin lead. Come on, one more good one. Five points on the line, and these two sides could use it. Yikes. Mm. This is uh, this is all Rash at this yeah. point. Yeah, that's 14. Rash needs five on this next shot. I think he can handle it. As long as there's no water bottle infractions, Sean Rash should be fine to get five pins. Daddy's back. There you go. Daddy's back. Is that what he said? Yes, sir. He's playing with some emotion, huh?